We're excited this week, man. We got a we got a big surprise, and literally a big surprise. It's like seven foot of surprise, Mike. Um, joining us this week on the uh, Sports Spectacular here, uh, former Illini star and NBA center Myers Leonard joins us. Myers, how we doing? You know, I'm great. I really am. Uh, life is good. Uh, my wife and I moved here, uh, Ellie, of course, with little Liam uh, to Nashville about I think nine months ago or so, and uh, we're loving it. So, uh, yeah, just taking life uh, one day at a time. But I just, I'm in a good season of life, if you will. I'm very grateful, and uh, I don't know. It's just uh, I feel whole, I guess is what I would say. And, you know, we'll jump into it. I'm not even entirely sure what all you guys want to hit on today, but you guys fire away because I'm I'm an open book. <laughs> That's good to hear. Hey, I, I just want to ask, first thing, because I've had people tell me, you know, I you got to see the Illini play up close and personal in the Purdue game. Mm -hmm. You got to come into town. Great game. Obviously, two really – obviously, two teams are still playing right now. So, mm -hmm. it was a really high-level game. What are your thoughts on this Illini team? You know what? I went through and I was watching uh, some highlights, and I've I've been able to catch the Big Ten tournament. Um, I've been able to catch these first couple of games in the NCAA tournament, and truthfully, um, a lot of times I'm keeping up with box scores and uh, trying to catch highlights. Every now and then I'll catch you know a full half of a game, and you know I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. The, we don't do a lot of screen time, so the evenings is obviously when the team normally plays, and Ellie and I are normally with Liam, but. I um I did get to see them play there in Champaign against Purdue, um, and then I went through. I mean, I'm I feel like I'm in a coach's meeting. All these notes I've I've taken for the last few games, and uh, <laughs> man, just so much balance uh, to the team. Well coached, uh, size, uh, veteran leadership. That's one thing I was on yesterday with. Um, Bill Cole and Sam Maniscalco, and that, these are some of the things I was hitting on yesterday. It's just, I think we have the ability to wear on teams, and also uh, you can sense that there's the level of connection between the players and the staff, and definitely, and in some ways, even more importantly, amongst the players. And what I mean by that is, I always, you know, think back on my career, um, and a lot of times I remember my Miami days actually um, in a totally different way than other parts of my career because I just felt like I learned, I guess, pretty unique ways of thinking about the game and, and that sort of thing. Anyways, my point is, is Spo always talked about enjoy someone else's success. And it's not always easy as a player. You know, we got the NIL. We got guys that want to go to the NBA. You got this. You got that. And you can sense with this team that they genuinely enjoy playing with each other. I mean, look at – I mean, it's silly, but look at the photos of them jumping on the plane. You know, you got Coleman wearing a Marcus Domas T-shirt. You got Coach Underwood wearing this. And these people – it's just like there's so much support and – um chemistry I guess you know is another big word that people use in basketball it just feels like this team is positioned to continue to make um, a run I mean they have everything you need and so I've just been really really impressed by their ability to come in focused clearly understanding of uh, what the scouting report is um, KYP, as we call it, uh, when I was playing, know your personnel. Like there's certain sets I'm noticing that they're taking away that's a quick hitter. And if you don't watch film or if you don't run through it in, in a walkthrough, a lot of times you get caught on quick hitters, you know, because it's like, all right, well, there's a reason this this play is designed to get a three or get, you know, a back screen for a layup, something to get, get the other team going. And you can tell that the focus level is there. And I would just come back to – there's a lot of veterans. I mean, when I go through Terrence Shannon, veteran, Marcus, veteran, Coleman, veteran, Quincy, veteran, Ty Rogers, junior, correct? Sophomore. 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 So for a guy who's bringing a lot of energy and um, playing well, maybe on the younger side, but still, um, Danger, Luke, I mean – by the way, all those guys I just listed, 6'6", 6'6", 6'10", 6'8", 6'6", 6'9", 6'7". 
there's a lot of, uh, now when you run into someone like Zach Eady, <laughs> different story. Uh, that, that guy is uh, quite, quite a massive human being. But uh, let me just pause for a second because I can get into different specifics. But I just, I, I really feel good about this team. I mean, they just seem to like playing together. Um, pretty dynamic on the defensive end. Uh, they have ability to just break you down a few different ways on the offensive end. And uh, that's another thing that I've been really intrigued by. But go ahead, because I'll, I'll dig into some more of this uh, here, well, here whenever we, you know. Well, one of the questions we had for you, obviously, you know, being in the NBA teaches you how to scout out other teams and how to evaluate personnel. When you look at this offense, which is arguably, you know, the, the best offense that Illinois has had since, you know, D and Darren, um, what, what, what jumps out at you as a guy who's played at the highest levels that makes this offense so effective? Here's, a, here's an answer I bet you're not um, used to. A lot of it has to do with the defensive end uh, because if you're connected and – you are, uh, you know, there's been some ups and downs and ebbs and flows with, with, with the defensive side of the ball. However, when we do manage to get stops and we're not taking the ball out of the net, I mean, look at Terrence Shannon Jr. coming downhill in transition. Good luck. Speed. I mean, being a lefty's tricky because as a basketball player, you're used to most players. It, 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 there's all these little things. I mean, just the explosive power. Now all of a sudden, you know, the, even if he doesn't get to the rim, now he's got driving kick. Uh, you know, so it, it, to me, a lot of times it does start on the defensive end, which again, uh, still have to continue to focus on that end with a few things. But uh, offensively, I mean, put Terrence Shannon in pick and roll, spread the floor, let him make plays. That's something I learned in Miami as well. It's like, the ball is probably going to be in Jimmy Butler hand, uh, hands, excuse me. If it's not with the second unit, it's probably going to be in Gordon Dragic's hands. Why? Because Spo always talked about like, you guys are extremely talented players and we have every piece of the puzzle that we need, which is what I see in this team, the Illini. And if you put players, you know, sometimes you need freedom and let the guys make decisions within say a set or or here's what we're looking for but every now and then you just space the floor and let players make plays um just give it a little bit of structure and so i mean then you got i mean look at marcus domas man he can operate and pick and roll but throw him on the block and he's just he's wearing teams out and he's willing to let the game come to him and so are the the, the you know the three-headed monster if you will terrence Shin, of course normally is North of 20, north of 30 points a game, uh, especially over this last run. It's just been insane. But think about the first half against Moorhead State. People probably didn't think Marcus Domas was having a very good game. Was he having the best game of his life? No. But was he having a bad game? Also, no. He let the game come to him, and he ended up with the 10th ever, as long as the TV wasn't lying to me. Triple-double in NCAA history, uh, uh, tournament history. Think about that for a minute. We, you know, we had – Terrence, I think, had whatever, 21, 23 in the first half. Boom. That's where we got, you know, we, we mucked the game up. They, they start off 9-0 run, you know, three threes. And I'm everyone, I, I could sense around me, I'm getting all these text messages. I'm like, we're fine. Relax. And um, then all of a sudden, the game started to flow our direction. But, you know, to be fair, uh, Morehead State brought it. And then we just wore on them. And all of a sudden, you, you know, you look down. And, of course, Coleman's got – Anywhere from 15 to 25 with seven to 10 rebounds and five assists and two steals and two blocks. I mean, the guy just impacts the game. And then you just look across the board and these guys, I mean, look at danger. I mean, what was he, nine for nine, 21 and eight, something like that. I mean, he checks in and, you know, there's just different matchup situations that we're able to exploit. I mean, he can really move, man. Like there was a dump off pass and he had that nice little lefty, um, under the basket finish. And I was like, all right, that was, that was a nice finish. Then all of a sudden he catches on the right elbow and he gives it like this shimmy cross <laughs> kind of step through same foot, same hand reverse finish with the left again. I'm like, Oh boy, big, big fellas feeling it tonight. And all of a sudden, you know, he explodes in, uh, in that game. And it's just, 
it's awesome that they have different guys that can take over in different moments. You're not just relying on Terrence Shannon to, to take over the game. And uh, so, you know, then you got Luke. It's, he's a really solid player. He boxes out. He rebounds for his position. He's not, you know, people might say, oh, well, what about the defenseman? To me, everything I've seen doesn't, doesn't seem like a big issue. You know, he's, he spaces the floor. He can knock down through. So I just think there's so many ways that you can go about um, attacking another team. And really what it seems to me that Underwood is doing, and I guess they mentioned this yesterday. I was unaware, to be totally truthful, that he sat down Underwood with Jay Wright. And they talked about taking advantages or excuse me, advantage of mismatches on the block or with or Marcus primarily and seeing, you know, who do we want to go after? And I mean, again, I always draw back to Spo. There is like absolutely no question in my mind. Every scouting report is different. Everything that we're doing now, we have your base principle and then you kind of figure out what it is game to game that you want to alter to, to try to get a win. And it's just, they really, the Illini are rolling period. And we just got to hope that that continues. They continue to uh, play well. Uh, if, and if we're making shots, we're going to be all right. Um, so let's see. They definitely a very versatile team. Yeah, they love the they love the booty ball. You know, that Underwood likes to call it the booty ball with the mask. It's it's pretty impressive. I I almost it almost seems like what they and as the games change, you were in college, I, you know, what twelve years ago, or something like that, mm. thirteen years ago, roughly. It's I'm not trying to make you feel old, but um, that's although okay. although I will say, when you when you tell stories about when you were playing AAU, and you had yelled at me on the sideline of the AAU game. It really mm-hmm. does make me feel old, Myers. Now that you have you have children and you've had an NBA career already, I, I do feel old. I will say that. Hey, this is a true story. We're in Chicago, is that correct? Yep. Yeah, and I was playing for the Macarvin Fire, and uh, my good buddy Kevin Walsh, who's doing an unbelievable job for himself in the basketball agent world on the coaching side, um, would often take me to all my games because I just didn't have the means or the – you know, the transportation to do it. And uh, anyways, I had uh, a couple of back-to-back dunks on, I think, both lobs uh, in Chicago. And the first one I caught, pretty sure I yelled, that was for you, Kevin. And I mean, we're talking like we go down, maybe back, and then another possession. Sure enough, we got another run out. And I caught it, and I re- actually reversed it. Boom! And I said, that's for you, Brad. Dirty. Just because I thought it was so cool, man. I love University of Illinois basketball. Like, th- this is like the mecca to me. So, you know, naturally, Brad is one of the first guys I really was connected with uh, when it came to the media with uh, Illinois basketball. So that was that was a pretty cool moment. But, yeah, that would have been, God, that would have been 2009. So, yeah, we're, we're getting a little – I mean, I'm even feeling a little old after man, saying I, that. <laughs> imagine how I feel. Imagine how I feel, Myers. I got to say. Yeah. Do, do, do you see when – you see how the college game maybe has changed a little bit to be more like the NBA as the shot clock's gotten shorter and things like that? No question. I mean, when I first came to the University of Illinois in 2010, uh, I mean, still a physical conference, less play on the inside, unless we're talking about Zach Eady. Um, <laughs> and you, it is. I mean, the game is evolving. It always will evolve, of course. But you look at the NBA, a lot more threes, a lot more transition. Uh, trying to get more possessions, push the pace, uh, allow guys to play with space. You know, it's a little different because, you know, there's no three in the key, which doesn't seem like a big thing, but it is a big thing um, when it comes to kind of dynamics of offense and defense. But uh, I will say also, though, there's always teams, of course, every year that are like this quote unquote Cinderella type of situation. And they're naturally are going to be better players at blue chip school in this and that. But I think basketball has more than ever, like kids train at a younger age. Uh, They lift weights. Uh, Their nutrition is just a little better. Everything is just a little better the further and further we go and the, you know, as time goes on. And so what I'm trying to get at is even those with all due respect, lower level B1 guys or even Juco guys, whatever, whoever may be basketball players are just really stinking good. And so you know, that's, I think, why you see more uh, explosive scoring in the college game. You see coaches uh, 
altering the, the way that they want to run their offense because guys are able to do more. You know, it doesn't have to be this, we're going to run flex offense and muck up the game and, and be tough-nosed defenders and not give up any offensive rebounds and slow the pace down. And as long as we win 59 to 58, I'm good with it. You know, which which is also fine. Don't get me wrong. It's just the game is evolving, and it is <laughs> certainly much different than when I was uh, in college. I mean, my freshman year, oh, good God, I averaged – Nine minutes, two points, and a rebound. That was not very good for a guy who was so highly recruited. But I was thin. I was not ready to play with the physicality of Big Ten basketball. Now, luckily for me, I'll never forget, I sat in Bruce Weber's office uh, after my freshman year, and I cried for pretty much an hour straight because I was embarrassed. And, you know, I felt like I let my whole hometown down, let people in the state down. Uh you know, and I've always needed to be built up. I, I, you can see that. Or if you know me, you know that I need positive affirmation and coaches who believe in me and this and that. And um, it's not that Coach Weber didn't, but, you know, Mike Davis and Mike Tisdale were both very good college basketball players. And so, you know, I wasn't going to get many, many minutes anyways. But the point is, is I, I went through that whole uh, postseason, I guess, review, if you will. And at the end of it, Coach Weber told me he wanted me to try out for the under-19 team. And uh, the USA basketball team, excuse me, under 19. And I uh, I basically told him no to his face. And he kind of looked at me and he was like caught off guard. And he's like, what do you mean? And I was like, coach, I'm not good enough for that. I'll, I'll just stick around campus and, you know, I'll try to get better for next season. And in that moment, as a as a grown adult and my coach and, you know, as, as you know, Bruce Weber cared about me also just as a young man, he said, Myers, you're going to be okay. You're going to train as hard as you ever have. And you're going to trust me, you're going to make that team and you're going to come back and you're going to kick ass next year. I said, okay, I guess I can do that. Like all I need is a little bit of reassurance <laughs> or someone to believe in me. And uh, sure enough, um, shout out to Chester Frazier, obviously back on staff, uh, man, we got after it. I mean, we're talking two and three times a day, really six, seven days a week. I mean, we get up and we go run, run at the park and, We'd sprint from a telephone pole to the next one. We, you know, he'd say, "All right, let's get some push-ups and whatever." We go, we go run hills, and we come back and we get skill work in. And then he'd be like, "All right, go to class." That night, I was always shooting. That's for sure. Trying to extend my range, which obviously helped me in my NBA career. Not so much um, at Illinois. I mean, I think I shot two threes um, between the two years that I played. But uh, anyways, long story short is that I, you know, I was in unbelievable shape. I ended up making that team. Um, I came in with a lot of confidence and luckily for me, uh, I was drafted the year after, but uh, the point is, is the game has really changed. And, you know, it was definitely like a holy smokes moment for me initially when I first got to Illinois, but you know, that's how it goes. And uh, anyways, let's get back to this team. I don't want to talk about me. Yeah. Well, Hey, you know, that's great. I love actually hearing those stories because, you know, of course I, I was, I was around then too. So I got to hear some of those mm. uh, back in the day, but I, I will tell you, I, as a, as a guy who covered you when you were like, 15 years old. I remember the first time I saw you, I think was in Las Vegas at a tournament when you're 15 or something like that. And you're like six mm. foot eight then. And so it's really, it's great to see where you've got, what you've done, what you've been able to accomplish where you are now. And, and you know, really happy to see, you, you know, your family, um, Liam, obviously great. Uh, you got, you got the, the, the child, which is, I mean, that's what it's all about. Right. And so uh, really happy for you, man. Well, thank you. I mean, I'll just, if, if you don't mind, I'll just quickly say something about that. You know, I, I have been extremely fortunate. Unfortunately, um, on the other side of the token, I, my health's a little beat up. A couple shoulder surgeries, ankle surgery uh, that didn't exactly go so well. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, I'm done playing. I, I, I definitely am. And the thing about it is, is when I tell people that, normally they're like, man, I'm so sorry. And I say this in complete humility, I was able to play 10 years in the NBA. I am an extremely lucky, blessed man. I just truly am. I mean, I come from close to nothing. Uh, you know, my father passed when I was six. Uh, my mother was able to scrape by somehow. My brother goes to the Marine Corps. I'm all worried about that. And here I am. You know, I, I think myself sometimes when I put my head on the pillow, I'm like, how in the world is this my life? Like, it just, and now I, I, I will say, I do know that I've always tried to treat everyone with the utmost respect, love on people as hard as I can, because I need that. I know I need that. Like as a man, I need my family and my friends and anyone, you know, that I feel like 
I put trust in to believe in me. And so I've just loved on people as hard as I can. I try to take care of everybody. And man, it's just crazy. I played 10 years in the NBA. And now all of a sudden I got a baby boy that's 21 months old. And, you know, I met the love of my life at Illinois, Ellie. Uh, I just, man, I'm so stinking grateful. And I'm in a, I, like I said, before we hit record, I, I'm just really in a good phase of life. And, um, you know, while the NBA was really fun and it was awesome to compete at the highest level, um uh, and you know i guess at some point i'll i'll miss it i don't really think about it all that often i get to wake up and get, grab my son out of his crib and he gets almost always uh in fact every morning he's got a big smile on his face and he says daddy and everything's fine you know i get to go out to we moved ellie's grandparents here i'd, I'd probably go there five, four or five days a week you know mow their lawn pull the weeds do whatever it's just i'm living a a normal simple life which is something that Frankly, I craved for a real long time, and um, so I'm, I, yeah, I guess I'm just uh, really grateful and in a good, good place in my life. So uh, I appreciate you asking and bringing it up because uh, you know we want to talk basketball, but there is more to more to life than just basketball, and everyone's loving the Illini right now as they should, and we're you know we're feeling good even all the way down here in Nashville. So, uh, anyways, let's jump back into basketball. But thank you for saying something. I, I do appreciate it. Uh, I know that Brad, you've always cared about me as a human, probably even more than a basketball player. So, so thank you. Yeah, no, it, I, that's definitely true. Um, you know, uh, we actually, we're out of time. We got to switch to the next switch gears here, but I want to thank Myers for coming on. We hopefully you'll come back again. Right. And we oh, I, will. I didn't even know there was a time limit. Uh, sorry no, about that. You're, no, you're perfect. It's all good. We, we'd love to have you back again. You know, we love having, you know, former Illini on and, and uh, it's, it's fantastic. And obviously, you know, I, me, I've always, you know, you, you're kind of one of those guys that's uh, we've had a good personal relationship over the years and I've enjoyed it. So uh, Myers Leonard, um, fantastic NBA career, great life going right now. Uh, thanks for being on the sports spectacular. All right. Thanks guys.